Hi, this is Tim Clark, Then Times Matrix News, coming at you live on April 18th. Joined by Chris today. Hi, Chris. Hello. This show is going to be interesting. This one we are calling Lucifer's Apotheosis, You Can Be As God. And what we're going to be covering today is the great discussion that Jonathan Kleck opened up for us, The Arch of Titus. And that's going to be part of our discussion. And of course, what we found is a, a lot more spin-off things that are going to add up to some interesting things. We're also going to cover Sol Invictus and Lucifer's Eye and his promise of apotheosis. So how are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing good. Well, this is going to be really, really interesting. I want to start the show off with a couple scriptures, one scripture in particular. Genesis 3.5 says, For God does know that in the day... You eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. For me, that sums up the whole concept of apotheosis. And we're going to see that as we look at the Arch of Titus today. The reason that we're looking at the Arch of Titus is that it represents a major event in all of human history. The Arch of Titus was erected after the destruction of the Jewish temple in 70 AD. It becomes fascinating when you actually look at it that this thing, the Arch of Titus, came to our interest through Jonathan Kleck's research about the Arch of Palmyra, also the Arch of Titus, and also the Washington Arch. And so we took a real close look at this thing to see what is connected to this arch. And it's fascinating because Titus himself is what we call one of the sons of Jupiter, who is the resurrected Saturn. This is a group of Roman emperors that believe they're descended from the Titans. And I just wanted to go over what his origin of his name is. His name derives from the mythical Titans, the giant ur-gods of the Greeks and Romans. And what was really interesting about Titus, other than he's associated with the Titans, is the noun is a rare form of Tysus, meaning penalty, retribution, or vengeance. So we have a Roman emperor who's a son of Jupiter, who is the resurrected Saturn. We've covered the resurrected Saturn and things like that before. But we have a man's name that is associated with the Titans, destroying the Temple of Jerusalem, which is at that time in the Old Testament time in the Jewish culture was the temple of God, where God resided. So we have a man named after the Titans, who are the mythological gods of the pre-flood that ruled in the age of Saturn, sitting here destroying the temple of God, which was the God that destroyed them with the flood. That's why this becomes really fascinating to us now, the story of erecting these arches around the globe, when you look at this thing, it starts talking about the apotheosis of Titus. And this is where we get into our interesting Genesis 3-5 connection, where you shall be as gods, the original lie in the Garden of Eden, godhood, man becoming God, the original promise of the serpent. Here it is in the Arch of Titus because it represents, they depict the apotheosis of of Titus becoming a god by his brother Domitian, who erected it after the destruction of the temple. It is a declaration by the Titans against God that you destroyed us, we are going to destroy you. What's fascinating, this happened during the era after Jesus was crucified, where this building, this temple, used to be a physical residence of God's house in the Old Testament tradition, but Christ defeating the grave, shedding his blood, resurrecting and going to heaven and sitting at the right hand of God brought about the temple transition from a structure into the followers of Christ who became the temples themselves, and the Holy Spirit resides in us. This absolutely just rocks my world <laughs> because we're looking at the age of Saturn striking at the post-flood era of the Arch of Titus, and we're looking at the resurrection of the rebellion, the emperor of vengeance, avenging the Titans and the destruction of the deluge. Why are we seeing these arches go up now? 
we are seeing these arches go up because we're trying to do a, a repeat of history where the focus was destroying God and his temple and his people in the land that he said was his land. Now it's the new world order is trying to do the same thing. But this time these arches are being erected again as a another statement saying that we will destroy Christianity from the face of the earth because Christians are the residents of the Holy Spirit and their temples. So we want to go back to the age of Saturn, which is pre-flood, and they are declaring this as the golden age. And this is my kind of roundabout way of syncing up the importance of this. And we're going to have Chris discuss what's in this arch and also how this translates to some of these modern rituals. So, Chris, go ahead and talk about what's in this arch. When Titus conquered the Jews and destroyed the temple, he sacrificed to Jupiter at that time because these People believe that they are the descendants of Jupiter. The top of the arch of Titus is showing Titus carried into heaven on the wings of an eagle. We know that the eagle represents Jupiter. The arch that was put in Washington, you can see the twin towers right through the arch that Jonathan Kleck pointed out. And this is why we started looking into all of this. And there's so many connections to this, but we can only go through some of them which tie to the sun god because in Washington, where the Twin Towers are and the arch sits, there is the sun wheel, the sun symbol, the circle with the dot in the middle. Now, this predictive programming is in all the movies. In 2017, we have a lot of movies that represent the number eight, like Star Trek 8, Fast and Furious 8. Wonder Woman with the eight-pointed star of Anu on her head. And so we have all of this symbolism all around us in children's cartoons even, going through portals. The cartoons are talking about supercomputers and being your own gods. And these things are just bombarding us in this world right now with this sun worship and putting this predictive programming in everyone's heads as they build these arches and continue to put the symbolism up. Yes, and it's a definite statement. It's a statement that what they did with the first temple, which was the destruction of supposedly God and his people, and they're wiping them from the face of the earth and dispersing them in diaspora around the world, that's what they intend to do again. Again, it's the same Genesis 3-5 rebellion of you shall be as gods. It is the rebellion against God and that man in this humanistic world that we live in is going to make himself God. So therefore, the Freemasons have the apotheosis of Washington in the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., of Washington becoming God, which is the same as Titus becoming God and the apotheosis. So man being God and being God, they keep repeating this. What do they want to do these days with Kurzweil, transhumanism, and all these other things? They want to make man God. Michio Kaku saying that, what is it, nanobiots uh, can uh, replace the synaptic uh, material of the brain until you just have a schematic brain. And in a future show, we'll get really heavy duty into the brain chips of IBM and other things of the hive mind that we have been researching for so long. But this show is specifically just to show the in plain sight rebellion of modern man through the United Nations and all these global leaders that they are doing the same thing that the Titus Arch presents. They are going to rebel, declare themselves God, and we have no need of a God because we are our own gods. That really came home for me when I looked at this event that I became aware of off of watching a Fox News presentation called the Invictus Games. Where do we get the name Invictus from, Chris? From the sun god, Sol Invictus. And when is that birthday Sol Invictus celebrated? December 25th. <laughs> so here we got the sun worshippers, and everybody's heard for a long time that, uh, you know, we've been doing the, the worshippers of the moon versus the worshippers of the sun. We discussed CERN being over the temple of the sun with the Apollyon and in Jerusalem and things with the temples of the moon. 
There's those who worship the sun, those who worship the moon, and a lot of this stuff goes back to sun worship. Invictus Games became very interesting to me because I wasn't really aware of it. I'm not making any allusions to being disrespectful in any which ways to wounded warriors, and that's not even the topic that I'm discussing. I'm discussing the symbolism that all the men and women who serve in the armed forces and are injured and putting their lives back together, we applaud them and support them in every way we can. I just found that this one was connected to the royal family through Prince Harry. And it's a very interesting game. It's basically to support wounded warriors and give them their own athletic events and build community and support around wounded soldiers coming back home and their value and all those things, which is fine. What did you think the first time that you looked at this show, Chris? It really bothered me for a few things. I mean, we know that Prince Harry claims that he is an inheritor of the royalties, you know, of the royal family. And I do believe, in my opinion, that's the bloodline of Cain. But it really bothered me because it says, I am. Jesus is I am. He is the light of the world. Jesus is the great I am. And so when I keep seeing this, I'm the master of my fate. I'm the captain of my soul. It really bothered me because Jesus should be the captain of everybody's soul not yourself. So when I saw I am, I thought of the apotheosis that you're Mm -hmm. talking about. I thought Mm -hmm. about be as your own gods. Mm -hmm. And, And so this is just a message that the elite are bringing out on a big scale because Obama's husband, Michelle, is promoting this with Prince Harry. And I believe that the games are supposed to be in May. Where are they going to be at in May, Tim? The Invictus Games are being held in Orlando, Florida, May 8th through, I think, the 12th. The I Am Declaration is first made in the Bible by God when he's discussing with Moses as he's sending him to the children of Israel. Who should they say sent Moses to them? And he says there, In Exodus 3.14, he says, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So again, it's very clear that I am is used as the creation God, God who created everything, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Father, I am, sent Moses. And here we got the Invictus Games using I am in an interesting shape also. How is the uh, Invictus logo put together? Well, you can see in the video on Fox News that Prince Harry, he's holding up a pyramid, and it has a black flag in it that says Invictus Games. Well, that kind of matches the capstone, Because the star of Anu, that is the eight-pointed star, it's together with Venus. This star represents the Ogdode, and the Ogdode represents the capstone. And this represents Jupiter, Amon. And it's really interesting because of the year of Jubilees that the Pope called out of nowhere. So the Pope has this Jubilees year, which the Bennu bird is Thoth and represents the capstone. So the Bennu bird represents the Ogdode and the Capstone. So all of this goes together with predictive programming that we're seeing. And just like the Sleepy Hollow show, it had the Capstone on top of a fireplace, and then you have the 13 stars on the flag. You have the Star of Solomon and the star that the Pope wears on his clothing. And then there is the star Sirius that represents this eight-pointed star and the black sun. Also in that picture that we're seeing with the pyramid on, on the fireplace in this sleepy hollow, you see the harp of Apollo. We know Madonna played that harp on stage as she was dressed as the Baphomet. And then in the same picture, Sleepy Hollow, there is also the star of Sirius on the back of this guy's head. Also, the Invictus Games, the logo itself, the I Am, is in yellow, which is symbolic of the sun god. But it's also structured within a pyramid. When you see the actual flag, the blackness of the flag is symbolic of also the black sun. So it's like, I am the black sun god, almost. It's like saying that what the Nazis worshipped was the black sun. And so here we got this 
capstone being prominently displayed. This is what we call being hidden in plain sight in my book. This is what you're looking at. We're looking at ritual without the involvement of the majority of the people there. This is clearly messaging going on. Again, I'm not trying to denigrate the event or the people who are wounded. I just can't sit by and not point out this is just so strange because it says i am unconquered basically in yellow and who's unconquered the black sun god is unconquered well lucifer is unconquered you know yeah and, and even in text it says that their sun god jupiter is the unconquered sun mm -hmm. and doesn't the car say unconquered on it that yes. they drive up on Yes, it says Unconquered, and it has a logo on the front of it. It's a cat with the red sun behind it. And the Bible talks always about lions, about the lion going around seeing who he can devour, other than the Lion of Judah, which is Jesus. The symbolism just gets ridiculous to me. So I'm watching the Invictus games, and they're out front of Buckingham Palace with Prince Harry. Again, it has nothing to do with the, the participants. I'm just looking at the ritual. This just caught me as a very strange event when they have this car drive up right here with the trident on there. The I am is a trident. If you look at it, there's three points there. I am unconquered with the trident. And here comes one of the gals with a red outfit. And we know the woman who wears red in the Bible. So the woman in red's riding the beast <laughs> is my interpretation here. Here we come with the capstone, with the I am trident there, and the black sun, coming down some portal. And I think Anthony and Chris and I have talked about coming down a portal, right? Coming down, coming through something. The capstone is coming through something. The door of jubilees. And, yeah, the door of jubilees. Why else do this? Why else ride up in a vehicle and bring the capstone through with the woman in red? The I am there also represents the eye of Lucifer in the capstone on the dollar bill that you're seeing there. Now, again, I'm not denigrating these men that are involved in it or the commentator, the woman in the red. I'm saying the symbolism of what you're watching, the sun color of the yellow. And they come through the gates, right? There's our gates. They came through the gates. <laughs> The gates of Ishtar. And, yeah, it makes me think of CERN. That's what it makes me think of. So it comes out of the portal. This is just such a strange event when I was just witnessing it. I'm just going, this is just so strange. And then they set this thing down here, and it's the capstone. That's about it for this narration. I'm just saying it just looks really ridiculous having... Prince Harry involved with this, knowing what the royals are connected to the, the beast system. And just to see this sitting there like that is a little much for me <laughs> to take yeah. in. And, you know, we pray for our country and our mm -hmm. men and women that fight, you know, for our country. And, and we love them and we pray for them. So this has nothing to do with them or uh, the soldiers that have been wounded of course, this, like Tim says, has everything to do with the symbolism, with the know. ritual. Mm -hmm. Prince Harry does not believe in Jesus Christ, let me tell you. And so if you have someone representing this that doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, Jesus knows who are his and who isn't. I don't think that God discounts those people that belong to him just because Prince Harry doesn't and he's doing his thing because God knows everybody's heart. And then what we're looking at is honestly, this was to, to show you a ritual in plain sight as it's happening today, right on your TV, right in front of you, involving the messaging of the eye and the capstone is coming through the portal soon to a land near you as the unconquered soul invictus, you right. know, and this connects with the apotheosis again, because all these folks who support it believe they're going to be gods, as we said in Genesis 3, 5. There's a lot of predictive programming, and like I said, it ties to the eight, the Babylonian sun will, and the eight gods that they worship. These are the order of the seraphim that they worship. And in 2017, the eight is a symbol that comes out in a lot of movies. There's a few that we'll mention here in 2017 is Star Wars 8, Fast and Furious 8, The Pirates of the Caribbean, Skull and Bones 322, 
which also represent these eight deities. And then there's another movie coming out March 2017 called The Ascendant, and their symbol is DNA with the eight sign. The other movie is Wonder Woman that has the eight-pointed star Venus on her head. And then, interestingly, in uh, 2018, Aquaman Unite the Seven comes out. I've seen a lot of people comparing the Antichrist with Poseidon, and I agree with that to some degree because he also represents other deities and other planets as well. And Poseidon carries the trident that Tim was talking about that was the symbol of I am. Then in 2018, there's a movie coming out by the Marvel called Inhumans. Inhumans. And also going on right now, a new series on TV that's called Hunters, which is a hybrid story about a hybrid human race that is going to strike out and destroy humanity. That is going on right now on the sci-fi. And plus 12 Monkeys is back, which is more of our CERN time travel, time bender stuff. And in the video game realm, fractal time travel types of things, Xbox just put out a quantum break, which is an absolute unreal kind of a time travel, destroying time and the timeline coming to an end. So we got <laughs> plenty of traditional predictive programming. Right. And, you know, uh, Invictus is also a game developer with a unicorn symbol. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I forgot all about our unicorn and the game game uh, Invictus one, but that's true. So we have plenty of things that we're going to come back with. We have lots of information on the beast system that we're going to be coming out with. We got lots of information continuing with this, and we got some uh, books coming out in the near future after we restructure some things. By the time you see this video, I'll be at the Watchmen Conference and I'll be participating in that uh, for us here at End Times Matrix. And I appreciate everybody that helped out with getting us there. We look forward to seeing you all again for our next show and keep going in Christ till the end. I have a verse too before we go. In Galatians 2.20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And Jesus said, don't worship the moon or the sun or the stars. So just remember that we're not to worship anything in the universe, but we are to worship Jesus Christ through his Holy Spirit.